Imagine being separated from your friends, family, neighbors. Never permitted beyond the confines of your home. Voiceless, friendless, nearly alone. Living in isolation. How would you express yourself? Would you even need to? Tradition is embedded in India, in every part of culture. People are taught to do that which their parents, their grandparents, their great-grandparents have done for as far back in history as they know. Sonabai expressed something completely new. It is a very personal expression of something that is very dynamic. It's not purely a decorative art at all. It's an expression of of a voice, a strong voice of an individual's need to express herself. Uh, when I entered Sonabai's house, it was so beautifully done. The colors were bright, and the jollies, the trees, the uh, animals, the birds, everything was so beautifully crafted and done. From the bright sunlight outside, you step in. At first, your eyes have to adjust, and then you notice the walls coming alive. There are monkeys jumping from the branches. There are birds dancing on the wall. And then you look around into the courtyard and you see these beautiful bamboo perforated screens, which we call jalis in India. And you see parrots about to take off for flight. And suddenly you realize that you are in this amazing wonderland, which is not just any ordinary village hut, but the creation of one woman, Sonabai. She wasn't thinking that this is tradition and this is uh, 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 this is uh, modern or contemporary. She could very naturally move from her inherited tradition into uh, many contemporary things, technically as well as in terms of iconization of figures. Women in India, in almost every community, in almost every strata, will decorate their homes with designs to beautify the home. Just about everyone works with their hands. Everywhere you look, women are constantly creating some sort of decorative art. And often, this is an ephemeral art form. For instance, in Tamil Nadu, women pride themselves on doing a brand new kolam, um, usually out of rice, made out of um, a rice powder, on their doorstep every single morning, and it's always different from day to day. But somebody walks over it, somebody drives over it, a bicycle goes over it, a bullet cart goes over it, five seconds later, it's gone. Whoosh. The women in Sonabai's village decorate their doorways and walls and the edges of the tops of um, all spaces with uh, decorative designs that are actually sculpted in clay mixed with straw and cow dung. That is a tradition in that area. 
women's domestic arts are not appreciated as anything that might actually transcend the home space, that might actually be important out in the larger world. It's seen as a pastime, as a decorative engagement. When I first went to India, and for my first 20 years there, women's art in India was entirely dismissed as being anything important. People didn't recognize it. Indians didn't recognize it. The Indian art um, critics and people who wrote about Indian art didn't recognize women's art as having any value at all. Sonavai's village is in central India, in the state of Chhattisgarh. And believe me, it's really remote. Like any other Indian village, there are lots of mud houses with red clay tiled roofs which are packed together close. And the streets are very clean. And you can see typical scenes of village life, people taking a plow and going after the field, children gathering the goats together, women going about sweeping the house. And it's, it's very beautiful. India is uh, truly unique because it has so many languages, so many cultures and in most communities or cultures what happens is that uh, people practice one form of art or craft which is then passed on from mother to daughter or father to son uh, or from the other women in the community to uh, the younger generation. In this process, what happens is that everything gets codified. You know, you use certain symbols, you use certain colors, and certain occasions where you do this kind of work. So this is what traditional arts would be. You know, you can totally look at a traditional art and identify it, okay, it's from this area of India, and these are the people who do it. In Sonabai's case, she, she was unique because she created her own visual vocabulary. Most Indian folk arts have very rigid formats. What happens is that any traditional practitioner always repeats. There is not that much scope for uh, individuality or that much scope for the imagination to play out. There is a paradigm placed upon the repetition of ancient ways because they are felt to be good. Sonabai expressed something completely new. I think when personal ideas and personal subjectivities get articulated in a work of art, then for me it is modern and contemporary. It's very modern that individuals' subjectivities come in through their work. When work is skillful to the, to the level of mastery, has integrity to the point of having no equivocation, it doesn't have to comply with anybody's categories, that, it, that anybody, any categories that anyone might put on it. Sonabai is truly unusual because here was a woman who had never been to art school, who had never been exposed. And yet, in spite of this, the vibrancy of her art and the uh, joy that she expresses is something that is unique. It's not a dark art, it's not depressive, but it reiterates and reaffirms life. The story of Sona by Rajavar is by turns sorrowful, joyful, and inspiring. Married to a widower in her mid-teens, Sona Bai was moved out of her home and into a house far outside of any village or town in a rural part of central India. Away from her extended family, away from other friends and even neighbors. A prisoner of her own existence, living in isolation with her husband and child. Never leaving the home her husband had built for them for 15 years. Indians live in tight communities with extended families. Sonabai grew up in a home with 16 other members of her family, brothers and sisters and cousins, all right there within that same compound. 
Suddenly, she was living with her husband way outside his community. That's not done in India. People don't live singly in the way that they did. I do not know how Sonabai managed to live such a secluded and secluded life and away from people of her own age or her own relatives. There's so many people in India that you're never alone, ever. And even, even women that are behind the veil still have access to their other female community members as well as the members of their family. He had this house way out in the fields. It typically had no exterior windows, only one door to enter it, and he closed that door. When Sonabai was first in this home with her child, since she could not go to the market, she began to make clay toys for him to play with. But she took clay from the edge of her well and began to fashion animals to, for her son to play with. And then she found that she could sculpt anything in her imagination. So she made uh, goats and cows and horses and monkeys. And she then started to make human figures. And pretty soon, the entire house was filled with figures. There must have been something very deep inside her. You know, something which she wanted to project, something which needed to come out. Being completely isolated from surrounding society, Sonabai really responds to that isolation by reaching inward. Um, and solitude is an environment that actually nourishes um, creativity. For art to be really generous and to be given so freely, the first stage in the creative process of that is immersion. Sonabai's circumstance was indeed extraordinary. Um, her art environment never would have taken place had she not been sort of entrapped. Women are a close-knit community, even if you're complete strangers. And there is a closeness, there's a sisterhood that protects you, but Sonabai didn't have that. She was completely cut off. Her circumstance becomes one that inspires her, prompts her to respond and in a certain way, save her own life, save her identity, make sure that she doesn't become entirely invisible in this world. I think that she really tried to create her surroundings by decorating her home in a way that brought the outside inside. Sonabai transformed her entire environment. That was an internal environment, an environment that was still within the walls, confined walls of her home. She was an environment builder. Her house was a canvas, so there was a container. I think that's what it is, an alchemy. There's a vessel, and the magic has to happen inside a vessel. If the vessel isn't there, it doesn't have form. So there's, there's a way that her house was that. It was kind of like an alchemical vessel which turned matter into spirit. The subject of women environment builders is a very interesting one because when you look back at the art environments that are known about, that still exist, the predominant number of them is by men. One artist environment builder, Loy Bolin of Macomb, Mississippi, 
was an artist who responded to a hard time in his life. And after being divorced and being sort of down and out for a while, he decided, he took it upon himself to redefine his life and reinvented not just his home, but his entire persona based around this idea that he wasn't going to be down and out anymore. He was going to reinvent himself in a glittery rhinestone cowboy persona with bejeweled clothing and an entirely collaged home. And in so doing, he succeeded in creating a life that was completely different, that it was filled instead of loneliness and boredom, it was filled with music, with laughter, with people coming to visit, and really it became a self-fulfilling prophecy. Somebody like Sam Rodia, of the, who built the Watts Towers, was responding to something a little bit more personal. He was an Italian immigrant who really wanted to pay tribute to his own cultural heritage while at the same time celebrating the fact that he was an American, that he was an Italian American, he was proud, and that he, like many other environment builders of his era, wanted to say, I can embrace and in love my fatherland while at the same time embracing and loving my new American homeland. Nek Chand, another artist environment builder from India, tried to avoid attention for a long time because he was building his art environment on land that didn't belong to him. The attention when it came was sort of a mixed blessing, but in the end, it really ended up benefiting him in that what he had done became celebrated and a lot of people threw their support behind what was obviously an art project worthy of international attention. When we talk about an art environment, we're giving a name to something that has really transcended home decor. Yet when you peel back the layers a little bit, you realize that women have been environment builders for thousands of years. Sonabai was not seeking acclaim nor approval. She did not create her art for others, nor to call out to the world. It was the world who took notice of this quiet, humble, self-effacing woman. When after 15 years, the villagers were finally allowed to visit her house, they were astounded by what they saw. We don't really know why Sonobai's husband, Holy Ram, allowed her out of the house. She would never speak about it. Her son has never spoken about it. In 1982, a new museum was founded in the capital city of Bhopal by a visionary artist named Swaminathan. And he decided to, unlike any other museum in India, put folk art and tribal art next to contemporary, modern, innovative art. So he sent scouts throughout the region, five of them. They came to Sonabai's house. They heard about her through the, uh, through the grapevine, that this was an unusual home. When they came in, they hadn't seen anything like it. It had had no precedence in India at all. They asked Sonabai if they could take some pieces back with them. She said, no, this is my family. This is my home. Of course you can't take it. So they talked to Holy Ram, her husband. They paid him what to him was a large sum. And then against Sonabai's protest, they borrowed a pickaxe from her husband and literally took a pickaxe and chipped away some of her large sculptures. Sonabai was in tears. Sonabai said it felt like they were taking her children from her, like her children were dying. When the scouts brought the uh, pieces to the Bharat Bhawan, the director, Swami Natan, recognized how remarkable they were. Within that same first year, 
she was given the highest award that India can give to any human being, the President's Award. Today, at his ceremony in Rashtrapati Bhavan, President Gyani Zell Singh awarded artist Sona Bai Rajawar with the President's Award. Until recently, Sona Bai was an unknown artist living in a remote region of Surguja district in Madhya Pradesh. Discovered by Swaminathan of Bhopal's Bharat Bhavan, she drew the attention of art critics and museum directors with her innovative art. Mrs. Pupul Jekar, founder of the Indian National Trust for Art and Cultural Heritage, joined the president in presenting Sonabai with the bronze plaque. And her life was never the same again. Uh, within six months of receiving that award, Sonabai and her son were on a plane to San Diego, California. The amazing thing about Sonabai is that she seemed completely unaffected by her fame. Suddenly she's flown halfway across the world, working in a museum. It just must have been so much of a shock to her, like a culture shock or a traumatic shock, that when she went back home to her village, she just had to leave it all behind. Sonabai had to be reminded of the fact that she even went to San Diego. Her son, Darogaram, remembers all the details vividly because he accompanied her, but she doesn't remember any of it. Most traditional artists are threads in the fabric that weave generations together, usually expressing styles passed on from forebearers. But not Sonabai. Sonabai's art emanates from deep within her. Untrained, illiterate, with no exposure to the outside world, her art is informed by no one else. Sonabai's hands were her voice. They took substance and transformed her walls into something that was very much her voice. The phenomenon of gesture is so present in, in Sonabai's work that, um, that just running my hands in the marks that she made, she couldn't have made those marks just with her wrist. Those are marks that are made from the shoulder. <laughs> so that means that's a person who's alive. She's alive the way the wind is alive. When I first heard of Sonabai's death, I thought, oh, she's gone. I felt a great loss because she had a lot to teach, not only her art, but of what a good human can be. She was completely mystified why anyone cared about what she had done. Some people are very possessive of their art. She was not like that at all. She welcomed other members of the family to come and help her with her work. Because her work influenced a lot of people in her village. After Sonabai is passing away, the Roga Ram has definitely come into his own too. The Roga Ram now is someone who is finding a fullness of his art. The moment you see the Roga Ram sculpture amongst everybody's sculpture, you can make out that this has been placed by someone who's a master artist. And in doing so, in becoming his own person as an artist, what is amazing is that he has his generosity to even allow his wife to come much more forward. So it's, it's a beautiful sight to see two artists who are now not afraid of allowing each other the space and to have some wonderful art. Sonabai created something absolutely original and utterly unique. Many in her village and throughout her district have inherited her style, incorporating her fanciful vision into their own creations. Now, throughout Sonabai's region, numerous artists decorate their homes in whimsical designs that owe their inspiration to this extraordinary woman. Quite a few artists in Sonabai's region have been influenced by her and continue to create art in her style. Of those, six stand out from the rest. Uh, Darogaram and Rajanbai still live and work in Sonabai's home. 
While as not far away in the same village of Paputra, a young artist, Bhagatram, uh, has a really creative a vision of his own. Two miles away from Paputra lives Sundaribai, and she's received a lot of international acclaim lately for her work, particularly in Britain. Atmadas is a self-motivated young artist from a tiny village about 15 miles away. When he was a young boy, he was so excited by what he saw uh, in Sonabai's sculptures that he began to seriously study art even though he wasn't allowed to attend uh, art school. His sculptures portray a remarkable blend of the traditional and the contemporary. Today, Sonabai's legacy reveals itself and repeats itself in the story of an outcast, a woman named Parbati Bai, one of the millions of a voiceless, abused underclass in India. Working in a style derived from that of Sonabai, Parbati Bai is creating art that makes an invisible woman visible and a voiceless woman heard. In an area that was previously impoverished, Sonabai's village is now beginning to prosper. The national and even international attention focused on its artists is remarkable. Sonabai has almost single-handedly changed the fortunes of her region. Villagers recognize Sonabai's contribution and honor her as a revered elder. The fact that the quality of Sonabai's art never diminished as she was embraced by fame, to me is an aspect of her remarkable integrity as a human being. The gift that she gave her community was the idea that within each person there is this ability to take a less than ideal circumstance and transform it into something that is life-changing. Sonabai, in a situation that was inconceivably difficult, created an entirely new way of seeing, an expression of joy, of beauty, of humor, of whimsy, of color, of form, of texture. Sonabai's art has universal meaning because it teaches lessons about humanity, about keeping your noble self and not debasing yourself no matter how debased the circumstances you find yourself in. The reason that Sonabai's story is so evocative is that her art is evocative. The reason that her message is so important is that we need to know that we can transform our environment and we need to create a new vision, a new alphabet, a new way of seeing. Our wisdom cannot be lost, and our spirits cannot be broken. 